Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fat Jocks. This is the show. This is the time. You're in the right place if you're ready for fun. If you do like the show, if you've seen it before, go over to Apple Podcast. Give us a five-star review. Give us a five-star everything. Go over to YouTube. Like, subscribe. Do all of that good shit. It really helps the show, and we would really appreciate the help if you could. My big fat friend, Brian Vokey, what are we talking about today? Today, we defend all the soft body champions of the world. This is a big day for soft bodies men like me and uh, Bruce Gray. Nikola Jokic, MVP of the NBA. Me and him look exactly the same naked. Pretty stoked about that one. We get into baseball, the sticky stuff. What does it mean? You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. WWE, we break down Scotty Too Hotty. We also talk a little bit about uh, Trish Stratus and some of the other great names of the Attitude Era. We get into a big hog pole vaulter getting his pecker caught on a... Po- this man is a hero. He got his pecker caught on the bar. Everything. <laughs> We're talking big hammer here. Relatable content for Bruce and I. Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul. Was the fight worth the $50, you fucking marks? I stole it. Did you steal it, Bruce? Absolutely. That's right. Guys, follow me on Instagram if you want to figure out how to steal streams. Just DM me and I'll get you a stream. Uh, All that, a whole lot more. Enjoy the show, folks. It's a good one. Boot, scoot, and boogie. Personal file. 69. Offense. He was giving them the business. This fat son of a bitch. So we can win a game. He's fat. I'm a man. I'm 40. I, I couldn't Ooh, care less about Mr. Brian Vokey, how the how the fucking hell are you doing over there? How's that stack of dimes you got between your ears? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm about I'm about 20 cents short of a good neck. I'll tell you that right now. You do have a, you have a great neck. No, it hurts though. Oh, it hurts. Years I thought ago. you were talking about physical appearance because my when it comes mine feels good, but when it comes to physical appearance, it's kind of non-existent. Yeah, no, I got I got necks. I got neck for days. I actually got a little bit of uh, I yesterday I got a glimpse in the mirror of what my chicken turkey neck, whatever my old man neck is going to look like. Oh and yeah, I'm going to be one of the dudes with the two uh, support beams. Oh yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's what and I'm going to have. The, so the divot. Yeah, it's going to have the cup right there. I'm going to have young chicks doing shots out of that, dude, if I get rich. <laughs> Your neck's going to look like one of those blankets that firemen catch people in from a third yeah, story. It, yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, you're going to trap chicks in that thing. Yeah, I don't. I try to maybe, I don't know. I come from a long line of uh, no neck motherfuckers, so I try not to think about my chick, my uh Well, that's good, though, because you don't want, like, w- w- see, uh, listen, It's do you want to be better in old age or in younger age? Like, I got my youth, I had a good neck, but when I'm older, it's going to be stretchy and weird. Yeah, you don't have any of those issues because also you're swole and you got no neck. So yeah, yeah, you're not you gonna know, have. Thanks, that. I, thanks for calling me swole. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could get. Well, you have a chin, so you're not gonna get that Mitch McConnell bullfrog neck either. Yeah, I don't want that because that's. But I don't know. Do I also want to be an old man? Like, uh, I come from a long line of fat old men who wear suspenders. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a good look. Humpty Dumpty motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Some people like a, a susp- Why do old men wear the suspenders? What is it? What do, what do suspenders really do? Well, I think it becomes a point where your beer gut gets so big that a belt is essentially useless. Because oh, if yeah. you put your a belt, belt around, a belt probably way, hurts. It probably hurts when you sit down. And also, if you put it where your waist is supposed to be, there's a lot of air. And so your, your pants bag up right under your fupa or whatever. Gotcha. And then if you or if you bring it too low, it hurts because your gut's going over the belt. So, yeah, suspenders is just it, that's free. That's essentially being like I'm this close to just coming out naked. Yeah. yeah. Suspenders are kind of like a last leg kind of thing. Yeah. Like I just truly don't give a fuck anymore. Plus, yeah. when you have a good idea and you're going like this. Like, yeah, that's yeah. or like whenever you're trying to make a sale of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you're selling like a uh, like an excavator or some kind of farm equipment. Right. I just thought yeah. of dirty work where he's like, I've never seen so many dead hookers in my life at the <laughs> dealership. <laughs> oh man. All right, dude. Well fucking how's it how's it going, dude? How's the how's things in your world? How's how is it going in your neck of the woods, dude? Boyle Heights staying strong, stayed clean 
LA fell apart. LA is an Armageddon hellscape. Uh, it's it's Mad Max everywhere. Anywhere that was like desirable is Mad Max. Uh, as far as like on a lower class desirable, I'm talking about Silver Lake, Echo Park. Those guys, not like Beverly Hills, not where the millionaires. That's still the yeah. same. But my neighborhood, so chill through all of this. You wouldn't even have known there was a pandemic. And everyone came together and decided to stay the same. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's really great. Um, I did see um, that uh, my neighbors were rooting pretty hard for uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, for uh, Logan Paul. Were they? Uh, yes. And young, Lat- I- young Latino kids do love vloggers. Not only that, but uh, Mexican boxing fans hate Floyd Mayweather. Because of couldn't he oh well he came out in the sombrero that one he did time the sombrero thing when he who was he fighting on that one was that canelo or was that uh, i don't think that was canelo it was uh did he fight he fought de la hoya right he uh floyd everybody. yeah he really did he's floyd sombrero he what fight him. was that um yeah i'm not i don't have it right here uh, miguel oh, it could was, have been miguel cotto it was 2000 it was oscar de la hoya in 2007 oh. yeah yeah very funny though yeah, De La Hoya was legit. That was a, that was a big victory. From did you Tampa. did you watch the fight? I did. I watched the fight. I, although we were, you know, stealing it because I refused to pay for that shit. That's what I was about to say, dude. Who is in the fucking right mind is at this point in time paying for anything? I I do have a subscription to DAZN. Are you familiar with them? Yes. But DAZN, that's a great. I do not regret that at all. Uh, it's 20 bucks a month, which is a little bit steep. But. They get most of the big fights are on the zone these days. So you don't have to get pay-per-views and, and that's included in the 20 bucks a month. Yeah. Plus they have an archive of a shitload of old fights. Yeah. The same way that your roommate has his WWF subscription. Well, so that's that now on could... Peacock. Oh, that's all on Peacock. Yeah. Now. So for five bucks a month, you get the dude. I feel like I'm like the spectrum guy now. I'm trying to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the zone, 20 bucks a month, all the boxing matches you want to see. And also, if you like WWE, we got the Peacock patch- package. That's five yeah. bucks a month. Well, beforehand, he had the WWF thing. So there was multiple times at your house where we were just watching old WWF. And we knew like he was basically just watching wrestling through the years in order. Yeah, that so was, he's uh, pretty much all caught up on wrestling. Yeah, he's at right now. He's at Raw 2001 is where he's at right now. Yeah, so he finished the 90s. Um, but it was pretty great for him because he was on the free trial. He got a three month free trial because he got one month free trial and it screwed up. He complained, got an extra two free months. And then as soon as that three months was over, they moved it over to Peacock. So for five bucks a month, he gets all of the WWE and they have all the WCW too. Oh, Jesus. And yeah, he yeah. can also watch the mayor with Ted yeah. Danson. <laughs> <laughs> they also have ECW too, which means you can watch fucking New Jack try to kill kill like a non-wrestler and yeah, not Jesus go to jail. Christ. Have you ever watched documentaries about New Jack? No. Do you know who New Jack is? From like wrestling lore, I do, but I yeah, he's a black wrestler. A he's famous for having a scarred up forehead. His forehead is super scarred up from all the barbed wire and shit. But uh, he wrestled. He just died. R.I.P. New Jack. Yeah, he just died May 14th. Yeah. Uh, he was incredible. But there was a couple of times where he legit stabbed people. Uh, and they were like amateur wrestlers. Uh, in the ring or just kind of? In the ring. Just right in front of people. And he escaped jail time for both of them. He legit shivved two wrestlers and didn't go to jail. He got away with it in the, in the way that a comedian gets away with smoking. Uh, no, it's, yeah, part of, it's part of a live performance. Listen, it's a part of the cabaret act of uh, yeah. 1952, where if you're stabbing somebody in front of people, if there's if tickets were sold to the stabbing, it's no longer a crime. Yeah, I don't know. ECW Fair. had like an Isle of Man thing where it's like, hey, murder is legal here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You want to come. It's basically like uh, Death Row Records where it's like yeah. you fucking tired of not being able to kill a motherfucker in the <laughs> ring. Come over to ECW. <laughs> was ECW the one where the ring was shaped oddly? No, no. Uh, the that was TNA, ring. maybe. Yeah, that that's total nonstop action. Yeah, no. ECW had the regular squared circle, and uh, but they were known for like having like that's where Mick Foley broke in. That's where like Sabu, yeah. Raven, all the people who were just not really athletes but would just throw themselves off of 
Yeah. Back in the day, you to be a wrestler, you either had to be a like crazy athlete or a slot That's receiver right. style dude who was willing to snap his spine and get it resealed every night. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. To knock your stack of dimes in half. Yeah, dude. New Jack was a mess, but uh, he was hilarious. But he has a he started out in the South and some Memphis promotion. <laughs> and uh, They started out as like kind of Nation of Islam type of people where they were like uh, he that cut- was their thing is that they were like Islamic dudes. I don't think they were necessarily Islamic. They were like black supremacists. Um, okay. And so like the, he was like, there's a promo on the internet. It's a famous promo. Him being like, shout out to brother OJ for doing his thing. You know, OJ, what I say, that's two less we got to worry about, brother. Two less we got to worry. And people are just like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> boo, boo, boo. Dude, that kicks ass. That's what wrestling needs to be is shit like that. Yeah. That's why I feel like that's where wrestling is missing the mark these days. Yeah, it's it's owned by Disney. It's family friendly now. Ugh, yeah, fucking Vince McMahon. We were just talking before the thing about Vince McMahon humiliating Trish Stratus in the ring. Yeah, it's Matt Lauer style. Like a dog. <laughs> Matt Lauer style, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. Um, but as far as I, I don't think it's necessarily an apology is in order, but I'll, t- I'll put it this way. I think I may have been too hard on Triller. And I'll tell you why. Because when you watch these circus show boxing matches and there isn't all the other nonsense, it's even worse. I didn't think I could say that. But there was a little bit of nonsense, though. I there was a little bit of nonsense with the announcers, but it wasn't like like Triller. I don't like any of their decisions they made. And I don't like any of their creative decisions they made, except for when they had Israel Adesanya. I thought he was awesome. But like beyond that, I didn't like the announcing team. I didn't like the music, the musicians they chose. Who, okay, so sorry. Who it was announcing? It was Desus and Mero who were – they're fine. They're a nice the Bodega enough. boys. They're, yeah, they're, I like them. They're, they're fine. Yeah, yeah. But who are the other – who was the other guy? There was one Random guy Shab. that – who? Shab. Shab was a, part of that too? Desus and Mero and Shab were like the hot girls who like interview in the back. There. Yeah, yeah, but there was one more guy announcing who was like, and tonight we're about to see some oh, of the no, crazy- he's the showtime. That's the showtime announcer. He's yeah, uh, he does all the real fights. That guy was kind of funny. He does MMA too. That and he guy, was like he, when he was calling the Mayweather uh Paul fight, the fact that he was able to pretend that was interesting at all, I was like, he's earning a fucking paycheck tonight. Yeah, that will I don't know, man. It's I, just I, but before we get into the actual fight, I just want to say that I don't agree with all the choices Triller made, but I do realize that they were on the right path where it's like if you're going to have these goofy fights, if you're going to have this Chad Johnson running a route in the ring to avoid getting hit, if you're going to have uh, – did you see o- Ocho Cinco's fight? I did. Yeah, he got laid out. Dude. You know what's funny that I've never seen before is he got laid out basically unconscious, but then he was in the crowd for the Mayweather fight. Yeah, well, he's a football player. He knows well, that. That's what I'm he saying. Usually off. those guys go to the hospital. Yeah, no, 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 no. He was just in the crowd standing <laughs> with like a chick. <laughs> he also, after the fight, said that he's ready for McGregor. <laughs> Which is, dude, Chad Johnson is so goddamn funny. Do you remember that? There was that period of time where he was pulling up on people to play FIFA and shit. Mm-mm. He no, was like that. He was like driving 100 miles to people's houses to play him in FIFA and fucking eating mcdonald's every day like, i do i do remember that he live streamed roger stone getting uh, yeah he, he was on the jog the and he yeah. saw roger stone get arrested by oh, the fbi damn, i didn't know roger stone lived in this neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> dude chad johnson is so fucking funny yeah yeah he's like i'm just out on my morning run and i see the fbi raiding roger stone and he's live streaming it so fucking funny uh um, so you, okay so with the fight Wait, hold on. I just want to say about Triller, though, it's just so, like when you watch these awful fights, you realize that you do need to sandwich in other inter- forms of entertainment to make it worth anything. Yes. I just think they need somebody who is not a 47 year old black man from Oakland or whoever it is. Like it's some outdated or a 47 year old white man from I don't know who the fuck did it, but they need somebody maybe a little younger, more in tuned because it was but like a better show. Around if they're if the Paul brothers are going to keep fighting, although they did sign contracts with Showtime, so it's not going to be Triller anymore. But as far as the fight is concerned, did it look like to you? And I'm not saying it was racist. I'm not saying that, but like the do you ever did you ever see the movie The Toy with Richard Pryor? No, it's this. It's, it came out I don't know the 70s or something. It's like an old fucking movie. It used to be on Comedy Central all the time. Um, but it's about this rich white kid who hires like a black friend. 
who's older than him. And he has to do for a good paycheck. He has to do everything the kid wants to do. And that's what that boxing match. It looked like Logan Paul just rented Floyd Mayweather and threw himself a party. Like the way a dictator throws himself a giant birthday. party. Yeah. Yes. Floyd uh, Logan Paul looked massive next to Floyd. He looked roided. He looked. Yeah. yeah, He looked huge. I mean, the fight itself was very fucking boring. Did Logan Paul knock him out? That's what I was going to bring up. Do you is it? Do you think that's what happened? That Floyd knocked him out and held him up? Yes, it's called a flash knockdown. It's where it's a flash knockdown is not a real knockout. It's where you just you get stunned, like uh, almost like a stinger for your brain. It yes. just shuts off real quick, but then you can get it back really quick. Um, he, Floyd definitely held his carcass. I mean, his arms were limp. Everything was limp on him. Now, I do think that Logan was trained to do like what uh, Tyson Fury does to fighters because he's so much bigger to just lean all your body on somebody to tire him out. I think he was trained because people are like, that's a lot of hugging. And I'm like, yeah, you're I mean, it's called clinching. I mean, it was yeah. a little bit of hugging. There's it was a lot of clinching, but it was I've never seen it that constant before where it looked like Logan was just trying to survive. Exhausted. He was exhausted. Yeah, he he had no stamina in that entire well, thing. Well, also Floyd just like every now and then he would fuck around and just knock the wind out of his sternum. Yeah, he like, would God. like Floyd was toying with. Him. Yes. Yeah. They the announcer said it was like a cat playing with his food. Yeah, and it was, but I'm surprised that Floyd never went for the kill. What's a, why do you think that never happened? Because Floyd, in the history of his career, has never gone for the kill. But he could have easily done it that night. Floyd has never been an aggressive boxer. In his life. That's why like everybody's like, yo, Floyd's going to knock him out. I said it last episode. I said, there's no way he's going to knock him out. Floyd, the last, you know how many knockouts Floyd's had in the last 15 years? Four. I think, yeah, it's like nothing. And one of them is, you know what I thought was going to happen was. One of them is Logan. <laughs> Logan didn't seem to understand the rules because there was times where they would come out of the clinch. And Logan would be kind of just standing there and Floyd would jab the shit out of him in the ribs. And then Logan would look to the ref like, what the fuck? And the ref was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Did you have you ever seen the knockout uh, Floyd? Had with that <laughs> yeah, that's what that reminded me of. I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So I thought they were going to come out of a clinch. Logan was not going to understand the rules and L- fucking Floyd was just going to level it. Yeah. I just think that Floyd wanted to go eight rounds. I think he just wanted the whole thing. He just wanted to have fun. I don't think he was like, he's like, I'm retired. But I got to tell you, I am so goddamn sick. I, I've watched a lot of commentary on Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul. I've watched ESPN talk about it. I've watched, shout out to my new favorite podcast, the Porter Way podcast, Sean Porter's podcast. I've watched them talk about it. I've watched Teddy Atlas talk about it. Uh, I forget who else, uh, Pat McAfee. I am so sick of these motherfuckers just saying, hey, respect to Floyd for getting his money, though. It's like, at what? I'm so yeah. sick of that. How much money does this motherfucker need? And does legacy mean anything to anybody? Are we all just so fucking money driven and so sick that we have to respect that? That the fact that he conned. I don't know how, although apparently the pay-per-view numbers were not nearly what they expected and they didn't even sell at the stadium. So people are a little wiser than I gave them credit for, but like, I don't, I don't feel that way. I feel like he's got enough money. I feel like, like this shouldn't have happened. It's embarrassing for boxing. It's embarrassing for him. This is how people are going to remember him. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to remember the guy who knocked out Ricky Hatton, the guy who beat Miguel Cotto, the guy who beat De La Hoya, the guy who beat Canelo Alvarez, the only person besides Triple G who was screwed out of his win, but the only guy on record to ever beat Canelo Alvarez. This guy's one of the greatest boxers to ever live, and we're going to remember him not knocking out Logan Paul. And that yeah. means nothing to him. Well, he's going to fight Jake, too. No, he isn't. You don't think he's going to? No. I don't. Jake is so much better than Logan. He really is. Yeah, Logan but it's also garbage. because Jake is fucking deranged. Jake is fucking stupid. Yeah, and he, Logan is like an actual decent person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Lo, 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 Jake is a little off his rocker. Yeah. Um, he's going to beat Tyron Woodley, I think. I think I'm going to, if the odds are in the favor of Tyron, I'm, I'm, uh, Tyron, I'm voting. I mean, betting, sorry, for Jake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just sharing screen real quick. You ever see this? Lo- or, uh, what? <laughs> Holyfield versus Mitt Romney. <laughs> what the? Fuck? 
You're never supposed to see a politician with his shirt off. I know. I thought that was my exact first thought was whenever you said that Trump didn't get the uh, vaccine in public because he doesn't want to roll up his sleeves. Yes. Ex- first of all, look how beautiful Mitt Romney's head is and look yeah. how horrendous his body is because yeah. he's supposed to be in a suit. Although yeah. his body is way better than Trump's. But uh, get your hands up, dude. What a, I mean, this is a so this is funny beyond standard just claw. <laughs> I mean, just fucking lost it completely. Like <laughs> just, just went, went completely PTSD. Trigger. Just fucking leveled Mitt Romney. All of a sudden, he's just seeing Michael Moore in front of him. And he just yeah. <laughs> out. Oh man, that, that was very funny during the fight. Whenever. Uh, uh, they showed Evander Holyfield, and it was either Daisy, one of Daisy's and Mayor was like, "Get the good side, get the good side. You don't want to see that other side. <laughs> you don't want to see the other ear." <laughs> Dude, uh, you got to pull up because um, I don't have screen sharing right yet, and I don't want to waste time getting it. But pull up Mexican politician boxing. There is a politician in Mexico back in the day who got silicone muscle implants. Oh, I I've seen this. Yes, that? yes, that guy is that is so fucking funny. Yeah, and he, the guy just he, he takes a dive. They probably had his wife, like a sword to his wife's throat. Like, yeah. he, <laughs> he just yeah. it just takes a dive. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I couldn't believe. They're I, good. I, mean, uh, you I missed, could, but I can't. You the know. Jarrett Hurd fight was really good. I didn't watch anything besides the Ocho Cinco fight. And there was the, two. Uh, yeah, you watched the spectacles. Of course, yeah. There was two real fights in the middle there. Um, I got to ask you this. As a casual, that's what they call. Listen, As a, as a civilian. I know. I was going to say it's annoying when comedians call uh, non-comedian civilians and when boxing fans call non-boxing fans casual fans. I'm being equally as annoying. But for sake of uh, description, as a casual fan, why are you more inclined to tune in to Floyd Mayweather fighting Logan Paul versus two in their prime real ass boxers? But what brings you to that? I truly don't – because I'm watching it. I go, I truly don't understand. I don't understand why people bought this, why they care. I think when it – yeah. So, it was on Sunday and football's in the off season. That's literally why I watch yeah. it. Yeah. When it comes to me, spe- me specifically, I'm a great mark mm-hmm. when it comes to anything. I love touristy shit. I love – all kind I'll I'll fall into any tourist trap. So if I'll you fall, went to Paris, you would definitely go to the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I would go to the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've never been there still. Been to that town many times. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would do I'm I'm a big time mark. That's my my personal thing is I'm a mark. And I mean, I thought that fucking Ben Askren was gonna win. You know, so like I fucking I'll I'll say I didn't think Ben Askren was gonna get knocked out. <laughs> I really didn't think that. I'd put money on Ben Askren. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I I'm a perfect like sucker. What I what in every sense of the word, I'm a sucker. So that's why, why I but I also in my mind, I'm like, what if Logan Paul knocks out Floyd Mayweather? I want to see that. But also I'm like, what if Floyd Mayweather knocks out Logan Paul? I kind of also want to see that. And it's the spectacle of the whole thing. It's it's a the same reason that people who usually don't watch football would watch the Super Bowl. It's a spectacle. Right. See, I, that's why I've always been an NFC AFC championship guy. Those those are my favorite games of the season because they're the last regular football game and they're the last like yeah, yeah, it's just is the halftime show isn't long and yeah. just, like it's not about the commercials. Yeah. I don't know. I just like I just I get so sad when I think about it's just, it's the home run derby for me. Yeah. Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather is a home run derby. It's not really a lot of skill. It's people. It's kind of just going for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can tell how you really see how unimportant muscles are to a hard punch because Logan Paul unloaded and connected on Floyd Mayweather's face and it did nothing to Floyd because he didn't put his body into it. He was just arm punching him. And uh, well, he was punching like he was fighting like his little brother from the side, like two, like, like, you know, whenever brothers are fighting, but they're also scream crying. That's the way that Logan was punching. It was versus Jake is a much better fighter. Yeah. Jake. And, and he's still not good, but he has like Jake's overhand, right? Is legit. It's, it's professional boxer level strength. Yeah. Uh, he's got power. He's got power. 
Uh, yeah. Lo- I don't think Logan has a future in boxing. I think Jake has a future in Logan boxing. Logan will move to MMA. His next fight will be MMA. You think so? Yeah, because he's a wrestler. He was all state Ohio wrestler. Mm. Okay. Um, Maybe he'll wrestle Ben Askren. He'll move. <laughs> ben gets just another 30 mil just to be. <laughs> lose just, to yeah. Dude, I don't I don't think that logan i don't know if he would do mma because he does i don't think he's gonna want to get a, maybe he'll do a grappling match but i don't think he'll want to do like a fucking knee to the face mma thing i i i think he would i don't think you buy a compound in puerto rico i don't think you leave the entertainment capital of the world as one of the biggest entertainers in the world to exclusively set up a fight camp permanently year round in puerto rico unless you're serious like these dudes are serious about it as goofy as they are they're yeah. like they're legit serious. Uh, yeah, I just don't see Logan having a future in this thing, dude. I mean, his it's just if how long until he doesn't sell tickets? You know what I mean? Like if he keeps selling tickets. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I'm saying competitive boxing wise. But you're right when it comes to he'll sell tickets forever because people want to see him get knocked out. But maybe it's until he gets knocked out. Dude, Jake Paul is such a funny troll at the end when he's like, my brother just beat Floyd Mayweather. Let yeah. Sink in. He beat Floyd Mayweather. And you're like, That's so funny, dude. Such a funny troll, dude. Yeah. Jake Paul. Yeah. He does make me laugh very hard. He, he made me laugh stupid. when he unfollowed everybody on Instagram except for Ben Askren's wife. And, <laughs> and then they, and then ESPN asked him, why do you follow just Ben Askren's wife? And he goes, she's thick. <laughs> and the reporter goes, I'm sorry. She's thick with two C's. That's so funny. Dude. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Um yeah, right, dude. Dude. Shakur you Stevenson go? is fighting this Saturday. Okay. Not, okay. Okay. I'm not gonna recommend that to you because it's not this is but for boxing fans, I would recommend it because this guy legit, I'm not I'm dead serious. This guy legit could eventually be pound for pound number one in the world. Like he's 22 years old. He only lacks power. That's the only thing he lacks. But uh, beyond that, he's, his defense is unreal. His offense is unreal. And he's 22 years old, and he is so fucking good. He is so goddamn good. I'm really excited. This is a step up for him, but it's still not a step all the way up. But if he wins this, he should be able to fight somebody like Tank or somebody, somebody big, some Gervonta Davis type. But uh, I'm very excited about that one. Does it worry you that all these guys might just want to start fighting the Paul brothers because the money is better? Uh, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen because there's no way the Paul brothers are going to take these guys. Yeah. There's no way I bet. Like, listen, if they, I mean, and also for them, that's easy money. And that's just, that's just a couple months off from the regular circuit. Like they, if, if tank wants to go fight Jake Paul for $10 million and knock him out in a round, he can be back in the ring in two months going back for gold. Yeah. And his cloud is that much higher. So it might like, but there's no fucking way in the world. The Paul brothers are going to invite like, you know, fucking Artur beater BF or somebody in their weight class, like to fight. I mean, they would k- literally kill them. Yeah. Logan's a lot bigger than Jake too. What does Jake weigh? Uh, Cause they don't have to make weight for any of their fights. That's another thing they don't have to worry about because Jake Paul is one. 55? No. No fucking way. That's Sorry, what Floyd weighs. No, Jake Paul's 190. Yeah, so in a boxing, if you're walking around at 190, you should be fighting around 170, 175. So Jake Paul either needs to be a real boxer and cut weight, or he's going to be fighting at 190, which is a person who walks around at 220, 215, yeah. and he's going to get his face smushed in. Either way, at those weights, when you get above 168, 168 and above, those guys are all that that's heavyweight power almost all the way up. And see, what would, I want to see is like a two on two or a two on one fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's see, does, does that show my lack of respect for boxing? Because that's something that I'm that missing. would have to be UFC. Like a a, a triple threat fatal four. Because in boxing, you can't punch behind. Yeah, it's fair. So like maybe a tag team boxing match. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be that would honestly that would make more sense, and as opposed to us all pretending that they're real boxers, they might as well fuck it up on that level. And so it's a little more honest, honestly. Yeah, yeah what yeah, it yeah. is that makes sense. 
Yeah, but I mean, like boxing is so exciting right now. There's so many 22 and 23 year old studs out there right now with Shakur Stevenson, Javante Davis, with um, uh, Ryan Garcia, with uh, 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 Devin Haney. Like, there's like Tiafima Lopez. All these guys are under 24 years old and yeah. they're studs, dude. But the problem is, it's just people don't buy the lower weight classes. That's well, that's my thing too, is I. With boxing, I like heavyweight fighting. And that's why I think Tyson, I mean, Tyson was a maniac, but that's why I think it was so big is because people were getting knocked out. People don't want to see a fight go the distance. Yeah, I mean, Tank is knocking motherfuckers out. But yeah, I know what you're saying. I like fights going the distance because in my mind, like I'm such a cheap bastard. I'm like, if I pay for this, you better give me all 12 yeah. fucking rounds. <laughs> yeah, it's funny this knockout bullshit. That's, yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, let's move on, I guess, here. Uh, Joe Kick. Was Joe Kick your pick for the MVP? Yes. You were saying that be nope. between, between him, him and Steph Curry. What is an ugly motherfucker? I said the only way Steph Curry could could uh, make MVP is if he his team made the playoffs and they lost in the in the play in. Yeah. So, so Joe Kick is the lo- first person to ever be Jokic. drafted in the sec. Jokic. 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 Yep. Fuck him. Uh, I don't like these. I don't like these fucking foreigners coming over here. And these goddamn over. Serbians coming up. <laughs> these fucking Serbs coming up here and muddying up the game of basketball. We were on, uh, on worst hour. We were talking to uh, to uh, Jay Savory about some things that happened in Bosnia and, and Serbia, and he goes. Which one is Vladi Divac from? <laughs> it was like Serbia. He goes, this is how I realize these countries. I'm like, wait, so Chris Stapp Porzingis was fighting Luka Doncic in this war? Uh, just like that's the only way he's heard of any of those countries. This is very funny. <laughs> Do you guys talk about the, the president of France getting slapped? Oh, yeah. We opened with that. Oh, okay. God damn. How fun. That was the most French slap I've ever seen in my entire I know. Life. Yeah. We were talking about how it was like double jointed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, back the most hand touched his forearm. Yeah, <laughs> it is the most French thing ever to slap somebody. Exactly. We were joking about the security card jumping in front of him to take the slap. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, so, so Jokic, Nikola Jokic, Nikola Jokic. You've seen the pictures of him as a kid with his big titties. Oh, that's really him? Yes. Oh, I thought that was like a picture of like Matt Lockwood or something. I didn't know. <laughs> no, it's a, it's it's him. Big, big titty kid. I'm so sick of this American fat obsession as fat jocks. Now, a lot of people think we call it fat jocks to make fun of the fact fact that we're fat. But because we're fat and I'm fatter than I've been in a long time. So I feel like this rant is OK. I think two weeks ago, this rant, I would have been on the line to make this rant. But I think this week I'm good. I think I made weight for this rant. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick of people thinking that body types make athleticism. How many times do we need to see Andy Ruiz knock out Anthony Joshua? How many times does a Jokic or a Larry Bird need to win MVP? How many times do we have to have these soft body motherfuckers show you that sometimes muscle is in everything. You can be a very... Luka Doncic has no definition in his arms. He's the future Whatsoever. of the league. Nikola yeah. Jokic is the present of the league right now. No definition in his arms. You look at Andy Ruiz, there's a lot of definition. It's just not muscle. It's just wrinkles and, and slobby fat. And he yeah, was the heavyweight... It's all, it's all Modelo. This country is so obsessed with six packs because we were all raised on Jesus Christ and his fucking amazing abs. But it has nothing to do. You can be a top tier athlete. Look at every offensive lineman. Yeah. Do you know how fast Look at Vin- Vince Wilfork? Every offensive lineman in the NFL would beat us in a 40 yard dash by a second, at least, if not two, three seconds. You know what Babe, I mean? The Babe Ruth body's coming back, dude. It never went away. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is it's funny because I understand what you're saying, but this is a shockingly body positive a- angle you're coming out of right here. Yeah, I don't like people to be able to predict where I'm coming from. I, I like no, dude, you're you're letting, you're letting it, you're letting it rip. Uh, so Jok- Jokic is the lowest drafted MVP of all time. He's the first MVP to ever be drafted in the second round. Really? Every every MVP has been in a first round draft pick. Damn. That's so wild, Tom right? Brady, TB12. Yeah. But have you seen the moment that uh, Jokic was drafted? No. This is good stuff. Let me share here. So this is, you got me? Yep. This is Jokic's draft selection. Oh, 
Are you serious? 100%. That's all it is? It's just a commercial for Taco it's Bell? A t- he got drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. And he got the rolling ticker at the bottom yeah. of the screen. All he got was the rolling ticker during a Taco Bell quesarito commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to show me. I was like, it's not very <laughs> Denver, to, I feel like, to boo a draft pick. No. I thought you were about to show me, like, uh, do you remember when they drafted Eli? Was it Eli Manning? Who did the Giants draft? Uh, that got booed so hard. Oh, uh, Daniel Daniel Jones. Yes, I was saying, yeah, but that I was. Thought, I think that Eli got it too, but that was because he didn't want to play for the Chargers. I think it was. I thought it was about to be a Daniel Jones moment. No, uh, literally, no, not even televised. Got drafted during a commercial <laughs> break on the ticker during a Taco Bell quesarito commercial, <laughs> which is so funny. He invented a new position. And now I will say that people are a little unfair uh, when saying he invented the point. He, he's the point five, the point center. Mm-hmm. One of the first ones to ever play it. But you know who was a precursor to that, who never got enough credit? Andrew Bogut. Um, because he couldn't score, so he didn't get the credit. But Andrew Bogut, from the, when he was with the uh, Warriors, he was the best passing big man I'd ever seen. Yeah, I mean, dude was smooth with behind-the-back passes, just like – yeah, he was he was so important to those that first Warriors title team, but uh, yeah, no point center. Congratulations to him. I think I think it rules. I th- I love these guys coming over here from Europe. All these guys who their parents were in wars, so they like they're like closer to the tough years of their country. That's why we're so bad now. Because even though we've been yeah. at war for like fifty five years with Afghanistan, like we're not a tough country anymore. No, uh, dude. See, uh, dude, you're going to make me go full Tony Hinchcliffe here, dude. <laughs> I love it. Dude. I love Nagano coming over from sand mines in Cameroon to be. Oh, see, fighting, I have no problem. But when it comes to the American sports, <laughs> you know, dude. the American sport that was invented by a Canadian, uh, Naismith. No, I'm I, I'm talking shit. Well, baseball has been baseball is the original most diverse sport. Is that how do you gather that as far as countries go? You think so? Baseball has the most foreigners of any sport. As far as the four major sports go? Tennis. Oh, four majors? Yeah. No, four. Don't talk about fucking tennis. What the hell? Who, what about <laughs> tennis? Who the fuck are you, dude? You didn't make yourself clear. And also, when you say baseball is the originally most diverse sport, it just doesn't sound right because they uh, are famous for having a segregate, segregated league. Everyone was segregated. <laughs> baseball caught the flag. <laughs> they took it one for the team. They said, hey, you know what? We're all doing we're all doing this shit. And I know it's seen, I know it seems fun now, but it's not gonna look good here in a few years. So you guys, you guys go ahead and 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 mix it all up and we'll be the last ones. We'll take the heat. Yeah, and then the last of the last were the Gulp Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Well, golf golf was really the last one, dude. There were some certain country clubs that just let black black folks start playing not too long ago. Yeah, one of those being Augusta National. Yeah. The Masters. I mean, it's called the Masters, folks. Yeah, yeah. I'm sweating like Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> he can't steal jokes. I'm not stealing it. I'm just Although he does owe us for jokes we wrote for him. So yeah, cocksucker, pay to pay up, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we both got, we both read this article about the uh, the sticky stuff. The space. Ba- People think baseball is cracking down right now on the on the sticky stuff. So before anything, this is coming out because I'm not really sure exactly why this is coming out. But did you see this Garrett Cole interview? Is it in the article? No, no. Then so this is a big deal thing because right I know now. that he's been named as somebody who's because Trevor Bauer was basically kind of what you read in that article that Trevor Bauer had put out a tweet whenever Garrett Cole went to the Astros. When Garrett Cole went to the Astros and his spin rate jumped phenomenally, he was basically the tweet. Uh, I mean, and Verlander. No, Verlander went to the Astros and Cole went to the Yankees, but both their spin rates increased like crazy. Well, Garrett Cole, his spin rate went way up whenever he went to the Astros. Both of their things went way up whenever they went to the Astros. Mm -hmm. So let's see what he said here. So the Astros were uh, they were covering the baseballs and sticky stuffs, and they were getting drums played to tell them pitching signals. Yeah, they were doing all kinds of shit. Dude, so here, cool. here's what I'm going to get an Astros hat just because you like the cheating. Yeah, I love I love cheating. So here's what Trevor Bauer said: If only there was a, a really quick way to increase spin rate. Like, what if you could trade for a player knowing you could bump up his spin rate a couple hundred RPM overnight? Imagine the steals you could get on the trade market if only that existed. And that was in 2018, I believe. 
And then he also said that if uh, if I did what these guys were doing, I'd be the best pitcher in the league. But I have morals. Yes. Fast but years? everyone fast forward. Yeah. Everyone is doing it. It is basically the new steroids is what yeah. they're kind of saying in this article is that this should be the biggest scandal in sports. And this is Charlie Blackman made a good point. Charlie Blackman is a very good hitter who has declined in the last few years whenever these spin rates have gone up. Every single team's spin rate has gone up over the last few years. Teams are obsessed with spin right now. Mm hmm. Probably Black was significantly the Dodgers more than anybody. Dodgers more than anybody by a lot, by a lot, almost two times more than the almost two team. times more than the same. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone is Who everyone the Dodgers signed this year again. It's, could be anybody. Did they they signed they, like they, uh, let, they let a few guys go who didn't spin it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the new baseball is an ounce lighter. So yeah, it's an ounce lighter. It spins faster. It's just how things work in this. Uh, so, okay. Did they? Did they? Uh, they. Is yes. Dodger? Right? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if that's his uh, legal name or not. I was trying to think if there was any way to get out of this. If he goes by a nickname. Um, so, the okay. The MLB average is like way down to like 230 or something like that. 235. 235, yeah. something. It's brutal. Okay. And so Charlie Blackman made a good point. Said, I'm tired of people. It's Charlie said, Blackmon, but yes. Charlie Blackmon. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah brother. Mon. Uh, I'm tired of, pe of hearing people say that players only want to hit home runs. That's not why people are striking out. They're striking out because guys are throwing 97 mile an hour super sinkers or balls that just go straight up with the sticky stuff in the new baseball spin rate. That's why guys are striking out because it's really hard not to strike out. There's some pitchers where if you swing where your eyes tell you to, you won't hit the ball, even if you're on time. I have to go out there, and if my eyes tell me it's in one place, I have to swing in a different place, which is hard to do. It's hard to swing and try and miss the ball, but there are guys where you have to do it because their ball and the spin rate or whatever is defying every pitch you've seen come in over the course of your career. I basically have to not trust my eyes that the pitch is going to finish where I think it's going to finish and swing in a different place. That's because the ball is doing something it has no business doing. Yeah, that's crazy. He has to imagine where he thinks the ball is going to end up, which looks very different from how it, it like the visual of it. Yes. And uh, yeah, he's it's he's basically swinging blindfolded. Is what yes. And OK, so this Garrett Cole interview the other day is insane. Do you remember on episode? Remember cops? Obviously, remember whenever they would like catch kids who were like breaking windows or something and the kids like don't know how to act. So they would like obviously just give it away by the way they act uh no but i have been in that position myself personally. yeah look at watch this can you ever use spider talk um i don't i don't know i i, I don't know if uh <laughs> I don't speak English. I don't quite, I don't quite know how to answer that, to be honest. Um, I mean, there are customs and practices that have been passed down from older players to younger players, from the last generation of players to this generation of players. And, um, oh. you know, I, I think... Uh, oh, I think there are some things that are... What are you fucking talking about? Dude. Say no, lie, you fucking idiot. Just who's, lie. Who's the Steinbrenner that's in charge right now? I don't even know. It's like Brett Steinbrenner or something. He should have come busted like the Kool-Aid man through that fucking <laughs> Yankees logo and just jumped on him. Yeah, I think it's a Hank Hank Steinbrenner. Yeah. What like what are you talking about? Um, I um how do you, how are you that bad at lying? Uh, I don't you, like do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can you like, imagine him like cheating on his wife and he comes home and she goes, where were you last night? Um, there, you know, there's customs that have been urge amongst men. To there's customs that have been passed speed. down from players to other players where they fuck other people besides their wife. Play like, us, what, the play fuck? Us. what are you talking about, dude? That is the worst. How Just lie. He, he's a top five paid pitcher in the league. How has he not received any media training? Whatsoever? That is some of the, truly that is some of the worst like media. Oh, hair is a bit long for a Yankee, if I'm being honest. I mean, the hair, I think the hair is like allowed to as long as it doesn't cover like the neck bone or something. I don't remember what it is, but we had broke it down a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah I think that's pretty, he's pretty shaggy for a Yankee. Yeah, but uh, God, I got to tell you, man, that is an embarrassing. 
I love it too because I fucking hate the Yankees. Yeah, and I, you know, I admit I did see the Red Sox were third in the highest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're spinning, we're spinning a little bit. <laughs> we're spinning a bit we're there. We're third in the spin increase. <laughs> coincidence that we're back in first place i don't know uh, <laughs> a, spinner, a couple of spinners over there but to be fair to the red sox their era stinks they have some of the lowest era of all the winning teams so i don't think the spin rate's really doing that much it's more what we're doing on the offensive side steroids <laughs> yeah um, and, dude okay so some people are basically saying there's a and then that article i i really implore everyone to read that article it's a sports illustrated article uh I can't remember exactly what it's called, but if you just Google biggest scandal in sports, Sports Illustrated. I think it's called like the sticky stuff or something. The sticky stuff or something. It's a really fucking good article. It's a really good article. Yeah, it was you very know what's funny. When I was reading that article, I forgot what real journalism looked like. Like where they say things like we reached out to whoever they're slandering for um for comment and they did not respond. Like there was just like they did they vetted everything. They tried to give everybody a chance to speak. But the one thing they did that I had I took uh I I, I was a little uh frustrated Umbridge. with Umbridge, thank you. <clears throat> the one thing they did that I took umbrage from <laughs> is uh, they fucking they left little clues in there for teams to figure out who the fuck was snitching on them because they were like a journeyman NL relief pitcher once told uh, told us that, and it's like, do you need all those adjectives? Couldn't you just yeah. say a professional pitcher? You don't need to yeah. say that they're in the American or National League, that they're a relief pitcher, that they're a journeyman. I mean, that narrows it down. Yeah, some of these guys are saying that it's like whenever they're picking up these baseballs that, that the seams are coming off, that the fucking ball well, won't come off your hand. I wanted to ask you about this. If the ball is so sticky, right, because people are saying that you can hear the ball leave the pitcher's hand like Velcro coming off a uh, shoe, like shoe Velcro. Um, you can hear the – oh, they said it was like ripping off a Band-Aid is what they said in the article is what it sounds like. Now, would that not fuck with the fielding if the ball is so sticky – wouldn't it like accumulate a lot of dirt as it's rolling on a grounder and just be covered in dirt like a snowball when you're making a snowman? It and, probably does. And it wouldn't it fuck with your throwing if you're trying to field? Baseballs are thrown out constantly. So if let's say a first baseman gets a ball, he sees that there's a lot of dirt on the ball. He can immediately just throw that ball to his dugout and they can disappear that ball immediately without anybody even blinking an eye. Right. Also, are there not like fans who are catching them like Nerf balls? Remember, you used to have that like Nerf thing where it was like, oh, with the sticky pad and the ball would just stick to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stick your hand out and just catch the ball like that. There have been a lot of really good fan catches this year. Maybe that's helping with it. Yeah, dude. That's how Odell does it with those dumbass gloves. Yeah, they got Spider Tech on that shit too. They they got it all on that shit, dude. Yeah. It's like, who gives a fuck, man? Um, I think with receiving, I mean, listen. With receiving, they are the rules are already so in the favor of the receiver that I'm against the spider attack there, and I'm against the spider attack for a pitcher because offense sells tickets. Like, listen, Jacob Degrom isn't going to sell out on the road. You yeah. know, what I mean, he might sell out at home because people are excited to see the Mets win. But do you think, like, if I t- got in the group chat with the boys and was like, "Hey, Jacob, De- Jacob Degrom's pitching. There's going to be literally no action today. You guys want to go? Like, yeah. nobody's going to go." Yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. I. I mean, believe me, I'm that guy. I like. I, I'm money. also. I I like mean, you, you want your money's worth. You yeah. want to see. You want to see a game go the distance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that if I think that it's dumb for them to deaden the baseball. Remember a few years ago when they had juiced the baseball and there was yeah. more home runs than ever. That's what they should be doing every year. They need to juice the baseball if they're going to do this. What and does so that what, mean? There's certain like it's just like cook the books. I never knew what that meant. Juicing a baseball. What exactly? Do they, what are they doing? Okay, so do you know anything about college baseball bats? They're metal. They're metal, but they're wood. they have wood they're BB core, so they're deadened. Have you heard heard how base metal college bats sound now? They sound like a wood bat because they're dead. Oh, okay, because it's dangerous. So it's kind of the same idea what they're doing to the ball now is like. It's a reducing the the core of the ball, making it bounce more off the bat or making it lighter, making it harder to hit. Like there are different things they do to the ball every year to try to better it. But when they when they're juicing a ball, what specifically are they doing? Probably making the core of the ball more rubber than have you ever seen the inside of a baseball? Mm, Yeah, it's like cork. 
there's cork. So they're probably putting more cork than leather, more leather than cork. They're probably kind of going back and forth trying to get the magic recipe of the whole thing. But really, they're just fucking fucking it up. Yeah. Well, people are saying that they made it lighter. They made the ball an ounce lighter. Not an ounce. They made it 1% lighter. Uh, in, in an attempt to juice the ball to make it uh, more offensively productive, but it actually – they're saying it may have had a negative result. They're saying that the ball being lighter actually makes it spin more, but I think it's more just the sticky stuff. Well, that – so pe- what people think is that there's – this has been going on. MLB knows about this. They just don't know how to punish it because it's kind of like with steroids where so many people were doing it. So what people think is going to happen is they're going to come down hard on one person. And of course, probably, just like what they did with the Astros. Yes, but they're going to come down hard Trevor on Bauer? Trevor Bauer. It's going to be talk smack because he talks so much shit. He's going to be the he's going to be the guy that they come down on the hardest. Probably they're going to come. Who's growing the game? Yes, that's who they're going to come down on. Absolutely. I disagree with what they are probably going to do. A hundred percent. They're going to have to come if they want this to stop. They're going to have to come. Verlander. You've already got the sacrificial lambs with the Astros. And, and Verlander is not good for the game in the way that Trevor Bauer is. I'm not saying he's bad for the game, but Trevor Bauer's vlog is going off. Huge numbers. Yeah. Everybody loves him. He's growing the game. He's talking shit. He's fucking getting fired up. Next thing you know, they're going to suspend, suspend Soto for blat, bat flips. I mean, Tatis, rather. Yeah. They're, they're going to come down hard on somebody. And it, it, my guess would be that it's going to be Trevor Bauer and they're going to come down hard on Trevor Bauer and then probably a bunch of random people. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But until they fuck with a star, it's going to just keep piling. So I just Googled what a, what a juiced ball means. And it's like a fucking, okay, how is the ball juiced? There are three fundamental ways to change the baseball in the manufacturing process. One is by altering the seams. Each baseball has 108 red stitches. Pitchers rely on these seams for grip and movement. Even a fraction of a millimeter can have a big impact on a pitcher's ability to generate spin and probably command as well. Also, apparently in like Korea, Japan, they pre do because in, in baseball, they pre mud. You, you rub mud on the baseball. Top There's secret like, mud from a Delaware. Literally. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. It's all from it, the same place. A, it's a top secret location. Yeah, it's like his old lady's farm, basically. Uh, it really is so much money, dude. Fuck yeah. really- so you rub the baseballs to so they're not like too slippery. It helps you get a little bit of grip. The mud isn't sticky, but it just whenever a baseball comes brand new, it is slippery. So you rub that mud on there, which is dangerous if it's too slippery. Yes. Yeah. So in Korea, Japan, apparently they kind of pre stigmatize them a little bit also. So just- that's probably and apparently they're tr- going to start experimenting with that in the minor leagues or some shit. So if it's a big, it's, if it's a big open secret and everybody knows what's going on and it's damaging the game, why hasn't the commissioner, Mr. Rob Manfred, the, maybe the worst commissioner of any of the big four, why hasn't he come out and said anything about this? He, all he said is that they're focused on it. Is it, was he hired to dismantle the corporate, the, the business that is baseball? I really, I really don't even know. I just, he sucks. I know that, but yeah, he sucks. I think Giant it's just ass. He sucks fucking David Wells ass. <laughs> I think that's what they're going to have to do is make it where they pre do a lot of these baseballs. And if you're doing anything extra, you're going to get, you're going to get fucked. And, and there will be one head cut off. Yeah, somebody is going to get their head cut off from this whole thing. And they're not going to get like a lifetime ban. They're just going to get in trouble. Yeah. Bieber? Do you think it could be Bieber? No, it's going to it's it's going to be Trevor Bauer. Yeah. But in the sense, yeah, I don't know. It's But Trevor Bauer what. also is like um is there I'm trying to think of the right comic book villain. There's like isn't there a villain in Batman who started out as a good guy and just Two tried- Two faced, yeah, yeah. Harvey Dent, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Bay, Bay, uh, that's what Bauer is now. He tried to live the righteous path. Yeah, he really, then, really, truly, he was like, I have morals. I would never dock to the baseball. And, and now then, he's like, well, fucking everyone else is doing. Everyone else is evil. I'm evil too. Yeah, but not everybody else can dock to the baseball and then instantly get a hundred million dollar contract and a Cy Young. I mean, like, he was really holding back. I mean, every, everybody's doing it, and he's still better than everybody. Then he's still a great pitcher. Uh, so that's the problem with these 
I, I don't know, dude. Leave him alone. I just, I just like him. Well, I'm the same way with steroids. You throw Trevor Bauer is in the camp of make everything legal, legalize everything. He wants to legalize steroids. Yeah, he he wants the game to be fun as fuck. Well, I think steroids are like illegal in in, in a, like the law, not just yeah, and it's bad for your body, which is what they say in that article too. Is that the sticky stuff doesn't really fuck with your body at all? It's just that it, it makes you be able to spin it. I like I like how everybody hides it in a different place. Some people put it on the inside of their gloves. Some people put it under the brim of their hat. It's like where yeah. you put answers to the test. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah some, some guys put it on their jock strap. Apparently, that's dangerous business, dude. Stick your, <laughs> I know. Stick your pecker to your underwear. Yeah, now you're dumping rubbing alcohol over your cock to get it out of the yeah yeah well that's what that, that article is saying about like each before every game guys are raiding the training room with the fucking to get the popsicle sticks and then they come back to get the rubbing alcohol like it's just such an open thing if i was a manager if i was alex cora if i was dave roberts i would be like if you uh, listen you do what whatever you guys are doing i don't want to know about it i don't want to hear about it and if any of you if I walk in on it, I'm throwing you under the fucking bus if I, because I need to protect myself. So if I catch a jar of fucking spider tack or if I see some fucking sunblock, if I see you spitting into a bottle of sunblock or whatever the fuck you're doing, you are the sacrificial lamb because I'm not I need to keep my hands clean. He needs to be like the mob, the mob boss. Yeah, I don't know. But like, dude, Garrett Cole just ruined it for everybody. That that is like, come on. How, like, how do you, how do you do it that bad? Putting you on the spot right now, Bruce, have you ever used any sort of sticky substance as a pitcher? I did. Not. Uh, you already failed. You fucked up. You already, that pause, that gulp you took. No, I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know. So but what I was going to say is it's, it's literally <laughs> classic Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that baseball. Right. <clears throat> is what I would have said, but. Let's move on here. John Rahm. COVID-19. Guys pulled six shot lead through 54 holes. Shot a crazy round. Something like 11 birdies, a hole in one and a round. That's why they're trying to get us all vaccinated, dude. Because COVID is, is a superpower. Dude. It makes you be able to focus and it makes you be able to live in harmony and peace with each other and be one with your body. And the government can't have that. They can't control you. So that's why they're putting these fucking vaccines in our body. Dude, I mean, you did have COVID, and then what? How did you feel yeah, between the time you had COVID big. and that your huh? dick got twice as big? Yeah, damn, dude, was that for because you yanked on it so much when you were in lockdown? <laughs> you have fourteen days of isolation. You, dude. you draw, you draw and quartered your penis. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, PGA wouldn't discuss whether or not John Rahm had received the COVID nineteen vaccine, but under tour protocols that align with the CDC guidelines, players who are fully vaccinated are no longer subject to weekly testing or contact contact tracing mm -hmm. that Rahm had been subjected to that week. So it's people are basically saying that they didn't get the uh, you didn't get Jabberino, which is his choice. Hey, it's his choice, but it also cost him a fucking one point eight million dollars. Yeah, I wonder if yeah, I wonder if he would take the fucking nanobot in his blood now, knowing that it costs him one point eight million dollars, dude. I would I would get it a lot of shit for one point eight million dollars. But again, here's a man who's not a Floyd Mayweather. Here's yeah. a man who put his beliefs before his paycheck. I'm now a John Rom fan. I'm not an anti vaxxer I have the vaccination, but it's not against my moral code to get the vaccination. But this guy yeah. seems skeptical. All right, we we can start moving towards here, man. There's been a lot of like big hits are happening. Like in hockey, a lot of people are getting stretchered off left and right, dude. Yeah, which is weird because hockey's kind of changed a lot of rules to make it a yeah. little bit more of a gentle game. But also there was a minor league pitcher. Did you see this video? I'm not going to show it to you because it's fucking it's fucked up. There's a minor league pitcher. He's I think decent now. Uh this is like a week ago. He got hit in the head on the mouth of the ball and he started having a fucking seizure. Like a line drive? Yeah. And then he started doing the worm. Dude. It was fucking. He started going full Scotty too hotty. It was. <laughs> it was. It was wild. <laughs> but that, like that Scotty too hotty though is from my hometown of Westbrook, Maine. So is he really? Yes. You ever met him? We no. We have no no no. We have. Uh, Dude, how fucking cool was Scotty too hotty? I hated him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. He made me uncomfortable. <laughs> I fucking loved Scotty too hotty. Buff Bagwell. 
and Scotty Tuhati, they both made me very uncomfortable. They maybe had to deal with emotions that I, I wasn't ready to deal with. Dude. So, okay. So the one with the, on the Maple Leafs was, uh, I just lost this hit, whatever. It was, it's just been a lot of hardcore hits, but it's been, it's been wild. Uh, is there anything that you want to wrap up on? Cause I have one video I do want to show you. It's not an injury or anything, but I do want to show you. Uh, I don't trust you. I, I promise you. I would, if it was an injury, I would be like, sneak it in there. Like I have in the show past. Fucking Paul George snapping his leg on. No, the- because that is something that I do like to do to you, but I yeah. also don't enjoy those. By uh, the way, I learned the word stanion from that Paul George injury. I'd never heard that word before. Stanchion. Oh, uh, see. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, Stanson. It's the thing below the hoop right there, right? Yeah, the pole. <laughs> yeah, it's the pole because at the at the comedy store, whenever I'd have to set up those ropes all the time, those are called yeah. stanchions. Yeah, he broke it over like fucking Bo Jackson breaking a bat over his knee. <laughs> Not good. Uh, check this guy out. This is, a, this is why I've never pole vaulted is because I think something like this would happen to me. I promise it's not bad. <laughs> oh dude is he completely cleared the bar except for his dick <laughs> his dick was too big for the pole vault so this guy we'll, we'll cut the video in here but this dude is pole vaulting and he goes over the bar by a good three feet and he clears it but on the other side he would have cleared it if it wasn't for his huge pecker knocking the bar <laughs> off Christ, dude. <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, uh, talk about losing uh, but still winning. Yeah. <laughs> like he may have lost the battle, but he won the war. You know what dude, I'm saying? The way that they keep showing it and then they show it in slow motion, Ooh, they show it, it zoomed like it in. So bad. It doesn't even look like it hurts, really. It's just, it's really just purely entertaining. Wow. That is a hog, dude. Dude, this guy does have a fat pecker and it's, it's laid to the side. His cock and it not only. OK, listen, not only did his cock hit the bar, but the bar flew out of its handle. Yeah, the bar like the bar dove away, like jumped. Dude, his cock almost broke that thing in half. Yeah, I want to find I want to find out who this guy is. Because not only is he laying, and he caught the bar, not only is he laying pipe, but he also is like a pole vaulter, so he's shredded. I would love to see this guy fuck. Yeah, dude, he is phenomenal. He's a gold medal fucker, for sure. Yeah, we got to find this guy. Yeah, he's the fat jock of the day. The bar really yeah, does. He's not fat, fl- but his hog is, so he's still a fat jock. Is the bar made to do that? Like, so is it supposed to fly out on impact? I think when you drop a hammer on it, it does. He's literally... I can't stop watching this thing. <laughs> really? I mean, just look. Flap. <laughs> yeah, dude. It is. And it's it's not balls. It's cock. You can. Oh, tell. it's all cock. Oh, yeah. man. All right. Well, we could wrap up there. That was all I wanted to Actually, show you. you. Know, he's going to start binding. He's going to have to tape his titties down. I mean, like, yeah. like how people tape their titties down. He's going to have to tape his dick down. He's <sighs> 100%. He's going to have to do that uh, where you tuck it behind you. Uh-huh. Like a drag, like a drag, uh, yeah. a drag, drag racer. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, folks. Goodbye.